Monty Python, you guys, I believe, started making the show in 1968, 69. 69. In London, and it was, it, it took a while, but it was, it, it, it was and is revered over here as the gold standard by everyone in comedy, yet in England, you didn't know that for quite a while. Oh no, it took a very long time. Every time I've ever done anything, it's taken a very long time for people to decide that they like it, if they like it, you right. know? Um, and I, I think it's a real originality, and I've done two or three really original things. It takes time for people to get used to it, I think. And you were saying in the break just now that in the late 60s, early 70s, yeah. American television was so safe and boring yes, yes. and heavy. Yeah. And uh, I remember a guy from, uh, what was it called? G WGH, GBH, w uh, WGBH. W oh, yes. Boston. Boston. Bo that's Boston, where I'm GBS, from. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and he came over and he said, I hear this is a very funny show. <clears throat> We're wondering if we could put it on WGBH. Um, can I watch a couple of episodes with you? And he sat in this darkened room and watched the episodes. And when the lights went up, he'd gone white. He thought he'd seen a ghost. Yeah. Because he was thinking what would happen to his career if he ever put these shows out. Right. right. And so they, nothing happened until a guy called Ron de Villiers, who was running the PBS station in Dallas, one day took a deep breath and said, I'm going to put a show out. And he put a Monty Python out, and all his PBS friends called in. Uh, the next morning and said, have they burned the station down? You know, do they stone you on the way to the station yeah, this yeah. morning? And he said, no problem. And then they all put it out. And suddenly, out it came, thank God, about four months before the Holy Grail came out. Yeah. And that was why the Holy Grail was such a, a, a huge success, because PBS had prepared the way. But for also, when you, would, when you guys came, I think you did a Hollywood Bowl show, when you came to America for the first time and you did your show, everyone in the audience, you had no idea, they were all saying the lines to your sketches along with you. It was extraordinary. I can still remember. It was opening night at City Center in New York, and it must have been 1976. And I went on for the first sketch. I did the first line, and there was hysterical, mindless cheering, just like you get at the beginning of every show, right? <laughs> and... <laughs> not, not that you don't deserve it. No, 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 I, I do not deserve it. it. <laughs> uh, they're actually... <laughs> they're they're actually from... mildly electrocuted. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> The seat, the seat has a prod like, in it. Just a little yeah. bit. Mildly electrocuted. Yeah. So this, I did the first line and the audience were mildly electrocuted. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> and I then played the rest of the sketch to complete silence. And there's a big theater on an opening night and I thought, <laughs> what the hell is going on? And then I got to the end of the sketch thinking what a terrible flop it had been. And again, they were mildly electrocuted. <laughs> yeah. Huge roar of applause. And I went off and I said to the stagehand, what the hell is going on? He said, you don't understand. This isn't a comedy show. It's a rock concert. I yes. said, what do you say? He said, they know the lines as well as you do. They're just here to be with you. Yes. And they took, he took me and looked, we looked through a little gauze window in the, in the curtain so we could see the audience. They couldn't see. And they were, they were like this, watching the next sketch. <laughs> <laughs> they knew the lines. Wow. <laughs> And when we That's did it incredible. at the O2 recently, it was embarrassing because they knew the lines better than we did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. They get you out of a pinch every time. Uh, I could talk to you for about 40 days. Super, we'd have, all right. We'd have food brought in. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, uh, this is, it's such a delight when you come on this thank program. You. I, I, cannot, I cannot thank you enough or express what this means to me. So anyway, is available now and it is a must read. Get this book or I will find you and I will fight you. John Cleese, we will take a break. We'll be right back.